Hello everybody and welcome back. So let's do the text here right now. <clears throat> so uh, let's see, we're gonna make... It's gonna be pretty simple actually. So this one is the text part and we're gonna make another one here. This is gonna be the out, we're gonna do text and we're gonna change this one to be text <clears throat> so we use the font and we can use let's do kungen kungen that is um, the king in swedish so let's see if we can get some more bold i guess i want more bold bold we can go with this one so this is a font and we want to make it let's do scale it maybe font size 2 and we do poly extrude because we need some thickness on it so we have it here and there's a gotcha almost well or often when i use this node i forget to do the output back you see it doesn't have any back on it, but you just need to do output back and you have the back too. So now we have that one. I'm gonna do a little bit thicker. And also, well actually I'm gonna do three. I think it's, that's fine. And then, then I'm gonna do a peak. And peak is kind of pushing out everything like this. So I'm just gonna do a little bit to make it just a little bit thicker like this and we're gonna make this one just plug it in to the remesh here and see how that looks so there's something going on here and that's because we do too much peak here so if we just lower it down a bit actually we just remove it it's not that important Oh, okay, it happens stuff. Oh. I think I'm gonna use another font because I have the font is causing this one. Yeah, this feels better. So let's do Target size to do uh, more resolution on it and also just crank up the smoothness. And we could actually just add a peak here. So if we add a peak, do it a little bit. Yeah, looks good. So we got it. So this is so easy. And now we just kind of change the input like this. And we, if we check it out, well, it's need to be moved up a bit, of course. So, and we don't need to remesh, we can remove this one. So we're actually gonna do this um, match size. So what this one does, it's adding, so if we take um, justify X, we just do none, and none on Z, but I would do the minimum of the text gonna be well minimum or center or max it doesn't really matter well it did actually min to the ground so now it stands on the ground and if we do a simulation you now see it works so I want a little bit more resolution, do 0 0.75 and some more smoothness. So now this looks like this. Cool, super simple. So now we have this out text and if we open this one up, we're gonna save this one as sphere 
and then we just alt click and drag so we got the it's gonna be the text I guess you have some other text of course <laughs> Uh, input geometry, we're gonna do not the sphere, but we're gonna have the out text and Also, let's see Export this is important. We don't need to we, we don't want to save over the sphere We want to have this as the text asset name and We also in this case We are actually gonna make a color to the text so if we do a color node like this and we add it an orange color the way to have this saved in vertex color because sometimes you want it and in this case I want it we need in this node here in the settings export static mesh vertex colors so we click this one and then it will export the colors but you see there is a red mark because it's missing an attribute and you can see here it says to export vertex color create the attribute cd underscore v as vector i suppose and the reason is and it also need to be on vertex and um they need to be super clear about it under the hood for one or another reason so what we can do because now if you look here you see the color is on the points see here you see different information so on the points we got position we got air resist and we got cd the color but we want to move it to the vertex so we can just make an at attribute Trans no promote attribute attribute promote. So this one we want to change the original name is color cd from point and we want to move it to vertex and we want change new name. So the new name gonna be cd unders underscore v. So it disappear here but it doesn't, it's, uh, it will work for us. So now you see the red mark disappeared because now it's uh, this one have the attribute it expect. So export, it's the text asset name and the out text. So, and also we're gonna see, it will probably take 100 frames to make it uh, go stable. something like that so if, if it is too much yeah we leave it like this it's gonna be okay so let's say 100 we do 100 here now we have 100 frames so now we do render all And there is more resolution on this one, so it's going to take some more time to calculate. And here we have it. So inside Unity, we now have the new stuff. So the mesh, we need to up, um, set the settings here, and we're just going to use the preset. So we have the, well, it didn't, it didn't update as expected now it's okay and also the textures we do the hgr apply and now they are as supposed to be the texture material we're gonna read is instead of um, instead of this one you see the tick box we want the next one that we made in the last tutorial tutorial and then we just drag the position to the position and the rotation to the rotation. And finally we do the text in here with the material. And it's almost as we want it. 
So you see the color is not really showing up, but that's because in the shader, you see the base color is picking up from this color to fragment and we want to have it as a vertex color instead. So if we just make a vertex color into the base color, we save it, it should be orange. And yes, it is, or yellow actually. So this is nice. Yeah, I really like it, it looks really good. So we have, yeah, display frames. Looks good. I like it. So here we have it. All right, cool. Let's go and make the castle as well. So the castle, castle is going to be pretty, it's going to be a little bit different, but Hmm. I'm actually going to save that to uh, the next tutorial, otherwise this tutorial will be going to be too long. So stick around and see the next tutorial to see the jumping castle. Thank you so much.